Coming back to you as a critical thinker, truth seeker or skeptic, earlier you you mentioned that one of the traps you can fall into is that you may always think you're right. And so you kind of have to check yourself. You have to have some humility always kind of front of mind. What are the, the main things that get in your way or what are, what are the things that you're always trying to think about so that you don't fool yourself? Well, for one thing, it's good to check with other people too, not just check yourself. You keep each other honest, right? It's always good to have sort of that community who, again, it will will give each other feedback, right? Will call each other out, right? Not just reinforcing each other. And it's good to ask, like, am I the asshole here? Am I getting this wrong? Like, am I going down a rabbit hole or does this make sense to you too? And I have, you know, again, not everybody can do this, but because of, I'm an academic and a podcaster. I have, a, you know, I can call up a physicist and ask them, like, am I getting this right? Like, does this make sense to an expert? But if you don't have that, like, if you don't have a physicist on speed dial, there are, you got to find outlets that are like people you respect and outlets that you respect who are, you know, academic, professional, have a good track record of being intellectually honest. And if you disagree with the experts, you assume you're wrong. And that's a good first assumption. Assume that you misunderstand, you have a misunderstanding. Again, always take the most humble assumption first and always ask the question, all right, but can I be wrong here? Am I wrong here? Just, just reflexively, you have to ask that question um, and just have to constantly be going through that process. There are some areas where I find that I'm most vulnerable to self-deception that I have to really be careful about. And one is I'm very vulnerable to the skeptical narrative, meaning this person is claiming X X is a pseudoscience. It's complete bullshit. And I'm going to call this guy out on their bullshit, on their pseudoscience. And you can create this sort of clean skeptical narrative of they're completely wrong. They're pseudoscientific. And sometimes, usually, the story is more complicated than that. Not always. Sometimes, you know, creationists pretty much are 100% wrong, right? Because they're operating from a false you know, premise of, and then, and false. Um, they're, they're not engaged in science. They are engaged in something else. Right. So, um, they've sort of raised getting, being wrong about evolution to an art form. It's really amazing. But a lot of things it's like, you know, the narrative isn't that clean. Sometimes there are pieces of the narrative which are like somebody might have a conspiracy theory and I want to say every single element of that conspiracy theory is bullshit, but sometimes there's an element of it that's actually plausible and you got to say, okay, but this piece here is actually, I have to say is actually plausible. And so, you know, we just, we have to you know allow for that nuance and not just knee jerk. It's pseudoscience. It's gotta be wrong. Um, sometimes the people you really dislike because they're con artists or conspiracy theorists or science deniers, sometimes they get things right, not because they're following a process, just because reality sometimes happens to align with whatever their narrative is, right? It would be amazing if it never did, right? Sometimes it does. Sometimes, yeah, the government did actually lie about that one thing, or yeah, you know, that was scientific fraud. It happens. And you have to be, you know, to admit pieces of the puzzle that make your story really complicated and messy and not clean. And sometimes there's a huge temptation to sort of sanitize the skeptical narrative. And we have to be careful not to do that. The other big red flag is when, when the skeptical story aligns with your worldview, you know, even if that worldview is political or ideological or cultural or whatever, it's like it's you have to be especially careful that like you have to like, oh, I believe this thing that, you know, the people that I generally agree with believes. I have to make absolutely sure that that's correct, because it's so easy for me to be falling for, you know, 
following this narrative, you know. I am absolutely excited to share an exclusive offer with the Proof community. This is a limited time offer just for my audience and no doctor referral is needed. Function Health is a comprehensive at-home blood testing service that gives you access to over 100 biomarkers, covering everything from heart, liver, kidney, and metabolic health to hormone levels, inflammation, and nutrient status. That, my friends, is five times more testing than the average physical. I chose Function for my own blood work and to be a sponsor of this show because they are the best in the world when it comes to helping you understand and own your health. It's true, the depth and quality of their testing is unrivaled. And as regular listeners of this show will know, you cannot optimize what you don't measure. Don't guess, test. Use Function to know exactly where your health is today, and then intervene with evidence-based medicine and lifestyle changes to feel your best and reduce your risk of chronic disease. With Function, you get access to very important markers like LP little a, a genetically driven cardiovascular risk factor, ApoB, the most predictive marker of atherosclerosis, and LH and FSH, reproductive hormones typically missing from standard lab panels. It's not uncommon for these biomarkers and others to be elevated. For example, over 50% of Function members have an ApoB level, and over 20% have an LPA little level that is above the optimal range. You can even add on harder to access tests like cystatin C, a very sensitive marker of kidney function, as well as selenium and iodine nutrients that are essential for thyroid and overall health, yet rarely tested. So what are you waiting for? Run over to functionhealth.com forward slash Simon Hill today and be one of 1000 listeners to score a $100 credit. That's functionhealth.com forward slash Simon Hill.